Hey everyone, in this video we're going to go through disease prevention, health promotion, and patient education. Welcome to CASRN, where I teach you about all things nursing. We're going to go through the three different levels of prevention. We're going to talk about how to educate our patients, and then we're going to take those two and we're going to put them together and we're going to talk about health promotion. I really like this quote by Benjamin Franklin talking about how an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. When you think about some of the diseases and health problems that face our society today, if we could prevent them, we would save so much money in health and in health care. So when we talk about people not getting cancer, if people did preventative screenings and we were able to detect those cancers, this that prevention or that first part of treatment is a lot less expensive and a lot easier to do than it would be to go further down the road and have to do treatment when they're further progressed with the disease. I love prevention. I love education. And they're both very important in order to help people make the best kinds of decisions that they can make. Now there are three types of prevention. We've got primary prevention, secondary, and tertiary. First up, primary prevention is stopping it before it ever starts. This is going to be something like vaccinations, healthy diet, exercise, education, access to health care. And then this is something that's going to be done in a primary care office. So their family practice provider that they see, they're going to be the person that's going to be doing primary prevention. Next up, we've got secondary prevention, and this is returning this patient to a state of health. So this is where we're going to be doing health screenings. So this is catching the disease early. We're going to talk about behavior modification. So if somebody has gained a lot of weight, we're going to talk about how to lose some weight. If somebody has developed cancer, we're going to talk about quitting smoking to help them uh, reduce their chances of getting it again or making it worse. These are places, the places that you're going to see this are going to be mostly in hospitals where a disease has already happened, but we're doing our best to catch it early and to return them to a state of health. Or you might see this in home health or skilled nursing. A skilled nursing facility is where a patient might go after having major surgery. They're not ready to return home just yet, but they're not critical enough to need to be in a hospital. So skilled nursing homes have become a bridge between those two places. And then home health is where you're going to have nursing going into the home and helping people manage some care for a little bit. But the goal again is to get them to independence so that they can live without needing nursing interventions. And then we've got our tertiary prevention. And this goal is just to minimize the damage. We want to minimize or reduce the negative outcomes. So this looks like rehab disease management, such as medications. And like if you had diabetes, this would be long acting and short acting insulin. Uh, if we've got disability management, say somebody lost a leg in an accident, then we're going to help them do physical rehab and emotional rehab to deal with that loss and then learn how to work with a prosthetic if that's something that would work for them. Then you're the facilities where you're going to see something like this is long-term care facilities and rehab facilities. Now, knowledge is definitely power. So the only way that you can help your patients make life-changing behaviors is to provide them with the education and resources to enable those changes. So if you don't know that tobacco is highly linked to cancer, are you ever going to stop smoking? If you don't know that high quantities of carbohydrates and sugar are more likely to cause type 2 diabetes, are you going to make any changes? So does your patient know how to read a nutrition label in order to understand what is in their food? So these are some of the many key concepts when it comes to education that are really important. And I do cover a lot more patient education in my community health playlist, so make sure to check that out. But I'll give you a few key concepts here. Basically, we're going to want to do a needs assessment. So you're going to want to take the time to get to know your patient so that you can give them pertinent information. This gives you information that you need as well as helps build rapport with your patient. So you're going to want to look at barriers. Is your patient going to do anything with the information that you're giving them? And are they, do they think that they can do anything with that? Then we're going to want to look at readiness. Is your patient at a place where they can learn? So part of being a good community health nurse is evaluating if your patient is ready to receive the information that you're trying to give them. 
And then is your patient in a physical situation and are they emotionally able to hear you and understand and at what level of knowledge do they have versus what level of knowledge do they need? So there are four common preferred learning styles, visual, audio, touch, and reading. And if at all possible, you're going to want to provide the information to your patients in their preferred learning style or better yet in all four to increase their retention. And then always after teaching, you want to make sure to do a teach back with your patient and make sure that they understand what you said and that you explained yourself well. I typically ask, would you please tell me what I just taught you in your own words so that I can make sure that I explained myself correctly. We don't want to demean our patients or make them feel bad for not understanding a topic. So our job as a nurse is to teach the material in the way that the patient understands. And it's not our patient's job to understand our own teaching method. So now that you know the three types of prevention and have a general idea of patient education, let's talk about how you can marry these two concepts into something called health promotion. The idea here is that we want to promote general wellness in our patients. So wellness encompasses physical, mental, spiritual, emotional, social, and environmental health. We want our patients to have health in all of these areas. So as a nurse, we can use our skills to help with some of these areas, and then we can bring in other professionals to help with other areas. So we may need to refer a patient to a social worker to help with situations at home. We may need to refer our patients to a home health agency to continue helping them recover. We also may need to help our patients see a mental health professional. So our goal here is to help our patients reach the highest level of health that they're able to do. And if you'd like more on this topic, again, please check out my community health nursing playlist. It covers health promotion much more in depth. So quick review, there are three levels of prevention, primary, secondary, and tertiary. Primary is going to be stopping it before it starts. Secondary is going to be returning people to a status of health. And tertiary is going to be helping them cope with the loss. Patient education is really important because if our patients don't understand, they can never make the changes necessary to be healthy as possible. And then health promotion is kind of taking these two concepts and marrying them together. And we're going to promote all of the different types of health through education and prevention. Thanks for tuning in. Please help me grow my channel by clicking subscribe and follow below. 